Hello everyone and welcome back to our video class here at CSIC Maths Tutor. Uh, today we are wrapping up our vectors topic and this is the last lesson in the series of vectors. Our aim today is to prove that three vector points are, are collinear and that translates into our very simple objective, um, which is to prove that three vector points are collinear. What does that mean? Um, some people say collinear, some people say collinear. To be collinear means to be on the same straight line or collinear means to be on the same straight line. That's very, very, very important for us to understand in our heads that the word means on the same straight line. And to prove that three points are on the uh, are collinear, we need to show that, we need to show two things. One, we need to show that one vector is a multiple of the other. And that would imply that they are parallel to each other. All right. And then we contradict it by saying, okay, so these two vectors are parallel to each other, but they share a common letter. And if they share a common letter, then something is not parallel anymore, parallel anymore, in that those two lines would actually move to form one line joined by that common point. So it's a simple proof by contradiction. We prove that two um two vectors have the same component form, whether it's algebraic or numbers. They have the same component form and that they have a letter in common. So essentially to prove it, let me say it again, we prove that they have the same component form, which would imply that they are parallel. And then we show that they have a letter in common, which means that they can no longer be parallel, but they have to be on um, the same straight line because that point in common would join them together to make it into one straight line. So let's look at some questions now. And... Um, show how this can work in um, in our CXE questions. So our question here says OP and OR are position vectors with respect to the origin O. P is the point 2, 7 and PR is 4, negative 3. And we are to use that information to write some vectors in column form. That is OP and OR. Let's go ahead and do that. OP, it's a position vector. So we can simply go ahead by writing down the component form writing down this, this coordinate in, in matrix form. So we write OP as 2, 7. And there we go. That's that. And OR, to find OR, we need to do some work. So let's um, find OR. OR would be equal to going from O to P and then connecting from P to R. So it's OP plus P R and that would give us um, OP is 2, 7 and OR is um, 4, negative 3. And when we add those two together, we get 6 and 4. So we get 6, 4 for our vector there. That's OR being 6, 4. And moving on to, let's just write that here, 6, 4. Moving on to part 2. There's a point S has coordinates 14, 2. So at some point, we're going to be using OS. So I'm just going to go ahead and write it, write it down now. So OS is equal to 14, negative 2. And it says we are to use that information to find RS. Now, since we have OR here and we have OS here, we can find RS. So this is part Question two, part two of the question, part A. If we want to find RS, we can go from R to O and then from O to S. And since we're using RO in the opposite form, so it's OR, and we're going to be using it in the opposite direction, then we have to change these components to negative. So we're going to have negative 6, negative 4, plus OS, which is 40, negative 2. And when we add those two together, we end up with 14 plus negative 6 is 8, and negative 4 plus negative 2 gives us a negative 6. So that is um, 8, negative 6. Let's so write, write that a little better. Um, 8, negative 6. There we go. Um, so this is RS. We have found RS. And now we are asked to show 
um, that the vector, the, the points P, R, and S are collinear. Uh, we have just worked out R, S. Here's R, S, and we have P, R. So notice something. Um, P, R, this is part B. P, R is equal to 4, negative 3, and rs is equal to 8, negative 6. Now, what we can notice here is that rs is a multiple of pr. So, rs is equal to 2 times pr. So, this would mean that rs is parallel to pr. But notice now that the two share a letter in common. They share R in common. And since RS is a multiple of PR, but share the point R in common, then what it mean is that they are no longer two separate lines. So RS is parallel to PR. Um, but, but they share R. Therefore, they are no longer parallel. They're, they actually form one straight line. So um, P, R, and S would, um, would be collinear. And that is enough proof to show it, to show that the two lines um, one line is a multiple of the other one, but that they have a letter in common. And if, if, if you think about it, if parallel lines never meet, then they shouldn't have a letter in common in their names. So those two lines, one is a multiple of the other one, showing that they're parallel, but they share R, which means that one runs directly into the other one, or one is an extension of the other one. And so for that reason, um, the points on them would be on the same straight line. So we have shown that um, P, R, and S are collinear. Let's look at that in another question. Um, here we have a question that uses an algebraic form. So here we have in this figure, O, E, E, F, and M, F are three straight lines. The point H is such that E, F, that is this line, E, F is equal to three times EH. So this entire line, three times EH, and EH is U. So this entire line is 3U. And we are told now the point G, that is this point, G is such that MF is equal to five times MG. So MF is equal to five times this part of the line. So whatever this is, we multiply it by five, we get that part. Um, uh, okay, so the M is the midpoint of OE. That's more information. So OM is equal to V, which means that this point here is also equal to V, and this entire thing here is equal to 2V. Now we have some things to, to write down. So we need to write down HF. HF... To get from H to, to um, F, it says um, the entire line EF is equal to 3 times EH. EF, notice it. EF is equal to 3 times this. So this entire line is equal to 3U, which means that this part of the line here is 2U. And so we can simply go ahead and write that down because U plus 2U would give you 3U. All right, so we, we have written that down to you. Now we need to find MF. And to get from M to F, we need to go, um, let's do part B, let's write it up here. To move, get from M to F, then we need to go M to E and then E to F. So we go M to E, and to go from M to E, M E is um is V. 
So that's V plus EF is 3U. So there we have it, that MF, um, let me fix that, MF would be equal to V plus 3U. All right, we have found our MF. And so let's let's write that in. Um, 3, not 3, um, V plus 3U. And now we want to find OH. OH, to get from O to H, that is part C. To get from O to H, we can go O to E and then E to H. So OH will be equal to OE plus EH, which is equal to 2V plus U. So no stress here with that question. And now we go to part two of the question, which wants us to do some other stuff. Show that OG is equal to three over five times two V plus U. So this is our challenge right now at part three, to show that OG is three over five bracket two V plus U. So how do we get from O to G? Well, on the diagram, to get from O to G, we go OM plus MG. So OG would be equal to OM plus MG. And now we need the relationship that was stated in this part of the question, uh, where it says MF is equal to 5MG. And if MF is equal to 5MG, then dividing by 5 here, um, MF um divided by five would give us mg all right so om we know what om is om is v and mg is mf divided by five which is um mf is um v plus three u divided by five and so what we need to do now is just to tidy this up. We can write it as a single fraction. So let's go ahead and write this as a single fraction with a, with a denominator of five here. So we have five V here, um, plus five into five is one, and one times that is V plus three U. When we tidy that up, what we get at the top is six V plus three U, over over five and we can factor out a three from the numerator and factoring out a three from the numerator gives us three um bracket two v plus u and that is over five and so we have proven we have shown that um og is equal to three over five or three fifths of two bracket of um, two V plus U in bracket. So we have done that part. And now we have the last part here to prove that OG and H lie on a straight line. So OG and H, we have to prove that um, these three points lie on a straight line. We have found OG, it is equal to this. This is OG. And now we need to find, to complete the question, we need to find GH. Um, let me just block off this um, section of the question here so that we don't, um, doesn't get in the way. All right, so we need to find um, GH. To find a GH, um, normally we, I, I take the shorter, shorter route, so G to H, we can simply go G to F and then F to H. Or we can go G to M, M to E, and then E to H. I am, for, for some reason, I am feeling like taking the, the, the longer route right now. So I'm just going to take the longer route just because. All right. So um, GH 
would be equal to, remember in vectors, the route you take doesn't matter, even if it's longer on paper, in vector quant in vector terms, it gives you the same answer, so it doesn't matter. So GH is equal to GM plus ME plus EH. So there we have it, to get from G to H, we want to fly to this country, fly, flying from G to H, and we have no um, straight flight. So we fly from G to M, then M to E, then E to H. Hmm. All right. So GM would be the opposite of MG. And MG, we remembered, was MF over 5. So we can have the negative of MF over 5. And MF is V plus 3U over 5. So GM would be the opposite of, of, um, of MG. And notice we, we use MG as um, here as V plus 3U over 5. Now we're using it in the opposite direction. So we put a minus there to make sure that we change the sign of the components. Um, always remember to do that. If you use a vector in the opposite direction, then you must um, change this, the sign of the components. Now, ME is equal to V, and EH is equal to U. And all we need now to do is to tidy this up by getting it into a single fraction. So let's keep that um, LCM as 5. Put that over 1 and that over 1. 5 into itself goes 1 time, and 1 times all of this would give us a negative V minus 3U. And 1 into 5 goes 5. That would give us a 5V and a 5U by the same reasoning. Now, when we tidy that up, we get a 5V minus V. That gives us 4V. And a 5U minus 3U gives us a plus 2U, and that is all over 5. Yes? And this can be factored out. If you factor out a 2 from the numerator here, you will notice that we have 2 into 2V plus U over 5. Now, this is, um, this is um, GH. So OG, from before, we were found OG, and OG gave us um, 3 over 5, 3 fifths of, of 2V plus U. And when we find GH, we get 2 fifths of 2V plus U. So notice that they have the same internal components. So both of them have this same thing. So OG and GH. OG and gh and gh are parallel so look at the internal components there and you'll see 2v plus u 2v plus u they are the same same internal components same component form um, except for the for the multiplier so they are, that tells us that they are parallel but they share g so if they are parallel they can't share anything but they share G, and because they share G here, it means that they are no longer parallel. And so OG and H are, are collinear. For all questions that ask these questions, for all 60 questions, this is how you go about proving that three vector points are collinear. What you do is that you prove that they have the same component form or they have the same um, one one is a multiple of the other and once you can prove that one is a multiple of the other then that would tell us that the vectors should be parallel but because they have a letter that is common in their name then that will make them not not parallel anymore but um, one vector running into the other vector and forming the two of them forming one straight line this is how we do it i hope um you would have learned something by watching this video and if you if you, if you do consider subscribing help our channel to grow uh thank you for watching
and continue to work hard in your exams. Best of best wishes as you continue to go forward and you continue to grow in your math.